This episode of Frisky Fitness is intended for mature audiences. Mortal Kombat on the Genesis fucking sucks. I know, I know, you're sitting back there with your rose-colored glasses, ready to click dislike, and let me have it in the comments. It's the best console version, you'll say. There's a blood code. It has the original fatalities. It's a 90 schoolyard argument that grown adults are still having on the playground of the internet today. Nearly 30 years later, which console got the better port? Sega Genesis or Super Nintendo? While many remember the Genesis version fondly due to its retention of the blood and fatalities of the arcade original, I'm here to tell you that Mortal Kombat on the Sega Genesis is virtually unplayable trash. Don't believe me? No problem. We're going to take it one step at a time, and I'm going to show you why your favorite version of the game is hot garbage. If you get to the end of the video, and you've accepted the reality that the Genesis version of Mortal Kombat is the worst home console version, then like this video, subscribe, and turn on notifications. If you get to the end and still think this festering boil on the history of video games is some kind of gem, feel free to click that thumbs down button and call me a dick in the comments. Let's fucking go. First, let's take a look at the arcade game. Sure, it doesn't look great by today's standards, but in 1992, this game was the tits. Look at the digital characters. They're so lifelike. They almost look like a real person. I want to point out some details, and I want you to take this with you. As we stroll down memory lane, on the path to me shitting all over your childhood. All right, while we get started here, please take note that no filters or shaders of any kind were used to capture this footage. This is purely unaltered footage that we're gonna be using. So if you look here, we have a pretty nice layout, I think. There's a nice board, uh, kind of, you know, I mean, it's nice text, It's but it's not much yet. It's text, there's a textured background. Nothing too eye-catching or impressive yet. We have a nice little bit of full motion video here. The resolution's not amazing, but it's not terrible either. A uh, very short video clip of the actor playing Kano doing a little pose there. And of course, if you keep waiting through a track mode, there's more of that. Really nice scrolling of the characters on the sides there. Character select screen with a fully animated character model. And uh, one thing about this screen, the colors really pop here. And even in the fight here, you'll see the colors, they, the colors really do pop. We have nice big shadows behind the characters as they move around the screen, a lot of animation. And you know, you'll notice with the sound too, and I'll, I'll give you a little bit more sound in a moment, but there's a lot of very impactful <laughs> sounding things going on here. This roundhouse kick there. And of course you see the blood. Controls are just really fantastic, very responsive. Your character does what you want him to do when you want him to do it. The music sounds really good. And then of course you have the, the fatality. So now I'm going to give you a little bit of that again, just with the audio so you can hear the sound of the music and how, how great that sounds on the original arcade version. Cage, win. 
All right, now I'm going to show you what I feel is the better of the home console versions, which is the Super Nintendo version of the game. Fire it up here. A little weird kind of intro screens for the yellow text, but whatever. Text looks pretty nice. And a little animation of Goro, and you can kind of tell already that there are some sacrifices made to the character models here. Really nice logo for sculptured software. You'll notice that two different development houses uh, took care of these, which may have something to do with the difference in quality. Uh, no animation on the uh, title screen here. It's a little bit plainer title screen, but the logo looks very uh, shiny and dynamic. As we go into attract mode, it takes a second to load. You'll notice that the text doesn't look quite as nice and neat as the arcade version, but it still looks pretty good. The texture is a little less detailed, but it's still there. Uh, a much simpler animation here. Looks like it was just the same, uh, the same sprite captured there with a close-up. So not nearly as pretty as the arcade version, but still, still looks okay. And nice little Boreal legs with some story gear that was added in. And the, uh, the Super Nintendo was known for being able to display a lot of colors. I don't have the stats primary right now. When I do a uh, history trivia and tech on the Super Nintendo, we'll get more into that. Character select screen is pretty similar. The animation is the same, but you can tell that the character models are a little less detailed here. You know, things are a lot more compressed, obviously. You don't have the unlimited storage of the arcade cabinet. Uh, you don't have the, the quite the technology, the processing power. So things had to be scared, scaled down a little bit here. You can see there's they're a little bit blurry, the character models, but there's still some nice animation. The sprites are still pretty big and detailed. They still have nice big shadows behind them. The effects when special moves are done still look good. The controls feel a little bit sluggish on this one. There's a little bit of a delay on the controls. It feels a little bit heavier trying to get anybody to do anything. You notice the background still has lots of animation. You know, the month back there, just as they did in the arcade version have the gray, uh, <laughs> the gray stuff that uh, is, I, I, people call it sweat, I don't think it was ever meant to be sweat, I think it's supposed to be censored blood, basically. I lost my first match here because the controls, like I said, were a little bit sluggish. This is the version I played growing up. Now, if you look at the life bars, the life bars look just like the arcade, and, and that's going to be important. Um, they're not quite as detailed, they're a little bit less so, but I want you to really take note of that. When we look at the Genesis version, I want you to take a look at the, the light bars. They're not quite as as detailed as the uh, arcade version. We've got some nice scrolling in the background here. The clouds move by as the uh, characters move. That temple in the background moves around as well. The sound is great here too. The sound I think is probably on par with the arcade. Um, I'll leave you the judge. I'll give you a little bit of sound in a few minutes. Let's just be one more, one more match here. So even though the characters are a little smaller than the arcade sprites, they look a little blurry. They probably used kind of a filter to get them to, to look, you know, get them to fit onto a 16-bit uh, character map. Unfortunately, here when I go to do the uh, the fatality, I didn't quite do it right, so I just got an uppercut out of it. But those. Fatalities, the censored fatalities, really did require some thought. You know, some zero freezes the guy and shatters him, just so that it became a real fatality. So they actually did require a little bit of creativity and thought. So we've seen the arcade, we've seen the Super Nintendo, now I'm going to show you the Genesis. First thing you're going to notice right away, as the Genesis game loads up, this little tiny text here, a uh, little tiny white text, not much to it, not much detail at all. Arena uh, developed this one, so totally different development house. Uh, Probe, I guess Arena and Probe maybe co-published, I'm not really sure. And you've got this very compressed looking uh, font here. 
the title screen looks okay. It's not as colorful as the SNES, but the texture still looks good. But look at this screen, it looks terrible. Um, tiny text and that that uh, texture in the background is just like dots. Looks like MS Paint. No animation at all here on the uh, attract mode. Just a very low resolution image. So now let's take a look at this. Character select screen has very limited animation on the characters, very herky jerky. Uh, and you'll notice the color is definitely not popping here anymore. Uh, the, the color's there, but it's much more subdued. And very slowly scrolling. Look at those life bars. Awful. Awful. Nothing like the arcade. Now, the really terrible thing about this version of the game is that the controller uh, only had three buttons. The six-button controller was not available yet. So controls here are horrible. It is painful to play this game. And look how washed out the colors look. There's just not nearly as much color. I know that the, the Genesis had a much smaller color palette and could have many fewer colors displayed on screen at a time. You'll notice the sprites are quite a bit smaller. Look at that finish here on the screen. The finish her or finish him has no animation. It doesn't change color. It's just static red. I mean, yeah, you've got the original Fatality, but it doesn't look good. So now I want to show you this game without the blood code. Without the blood, because I feel like it's important to look at this compared to Super Nintendo just on the game itself. And you're not going to get the same feel of what it feels like to play this game. But uh, there's so much, there's so much sound missing. You'll notice the scrolling here isn't as good either. There's so much sound missing. Um, a lot of music is missing. A lot of sound effects are missing. A lot of animation is missing. It's a hero with no blood. Everything looks so flat and gray. The controls are, are just god-awful, the sound effects are missing. With no blood, it's just, there's nothing redeeming about it. And I mentioned before the shadows, there's no shadows at all, the characters have no shadow anymore. Oh, no, I'm wrong, the shadow just takes a second to appear, so it is still there, but it doesn't look as nice. It looks very static. A lot of frames of animation are missing. Here. Lame finish him, and look at this. This is the central fatality. It's an uppercut. That's what they give you for essential fatality. No thought went into it, no creativity at all. And that's it. I mean, that's that's what you got on the Genesis. So if you're still sitting there talking about how the Genesis is so great, listen to this. I'm going to give you some audio right now. How many sounds, how much music was missing from that? Most of it. Just awful. Just absolutely awful. Now, the Super Nintendo version was really criticized for its censorship. At the time, Nintendo of America was very committed to maintaining a family-friendly image, which is understandable. That image made them very successful, and it was an integral part of their brand. And the controversy was something Nintendo wanted to stay away from. When the game was so popular, a port had to happen. So the compromise, of course, was to use the censored fatalities and, of course, to eliminate the blood. Uh, now, whereas for the Genesis version, they kept the, the blood hidden behind a code, obviously, and the fatalities. But instead of sacrificing, uh, you know, censorship to make the port, they sacrificed quality. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that the Genesis was simply uh, a little bit of a less powerful console than the, than the uh, Super Nintendo. It had a faster processor, but less memory. 
uh, a less powerful uh, picture processing unit, and altogether not as powerful a machine. The fact that there are two different development houses that worked on these games too, I think was a big factor in the difference in the quality of the games. I'll bet you if they had a uh, sculpture working on the Genesis version, I'll bet you we've got a better version. But I'm going to find a little bit more about the history of that one these days. This is more of just a comparison for fun. Not really a big in-depth video today. So now at this point, I'm sure all your rose-colored glasses are completely shattered to pieces. If you thought the Genesis version was the better home port, you've been sadly mistaken for decades. Both home ports have their flaws, but it's clear that the Genesis version is the worst port. Even with the blood code, it still looks, sounds, and plays like absolute shit. The graphics are bad, the music is bad, the sound effects are bad, and the controls are bad. Please give me all your salt in the comments. Even without the fatalities and blood, I still loved the SNES port when I was growing up. It was, without question, the best adaptation of Alba at the time. That's it for now. Until next time, game over.